Pastor Gene is with us. Amen. And he's going to come and minister to us. Come on, jump on your feet, put your hands together. Y'all, y'all sit down so quick. How many of you glad you got some legs to stand on? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord is great, and he's greatly to be praised. Is God good to you tonight? Can you do me a favor tonight? I am Pastor Jesse Stevenson, and we bring you greetings from Freedom Dominion Christian Church. Our ministry, JLS Ministries, we thank God for the man of God, the angel of this house, Dr. Boyd. to Dr. Bynum, who is here tonight, and to all of our pulpit constituents. Can you do me a favor tonight? Can you stand to your feet all over this room? Hallelujah. You could, if you would do me a favor tonight, if you would, if you have anything in your hands, if you could put it down just for a few minutes. There are any distractions, anything that would try to distract you. We want you to remove it tonight. And if you'll be so kind as to grab the hand of the person who's to your right or to your left and say these words to them, neighbor, tonight, tonight, tonight the, Lord the Lord is going to sweep, going to sweep. through this place. Don't, don't let that hand go. Don't let that hand go. Hold that hand tonight. And look at the person on the other side of you. And just say these words to them. Neighbor, the Lord is declaring that tonight your life will never be the same. Do me a favor before you get excited and just squeeze that hand and tell them, I know you may not necessarily know who I am, but God has sent an apostolic unction in this room to declare to his people that he's coming in this room in great power, great demonstration. Tell them the wind of God blows for you tonight. Now let that hand go and lift that hand in the room and open your mouth. Stretch that hand in this room. Can you feel this atmosphere with the sound of your worship all over this room? Come on, don't let those hands down. With those hands lifted, open your mouth and give God a great sound of worship from the fruit of your lips. Come on, Zion. Now, no, some of you, you may have your hands up and we've been praising and worshiping tonight. But there is a certain frequency when we open our mouth in the presence of God that God hears and it causes him to respond. We were on our way home, Antoinette, Wednesday night from service and my two-year-old daughter who is two going on 30. She's really been here before, Dr. Boyd. We're riding down the road and we've been trying to break her off of her pacifier, AKA she calls it a bing bing. Because she was trying to call it a binky, but the only thing that came out was bing bing. 
So we've been breaking her off of this habit of needing this bing bing. Right as we were leaving the church, we were getting ready to get on the highway. And with the greatest confidence and greatest authority, she did not call me daddy. She said in utter confidence, Father, can I have my bing bing, please? And before you know it, I yanked the wheel and pulled on the side of the road. Because there was something in the frequency of her voice that made her father respond. I got a quiet tent tonight. There is something when the worshiper knows who their father is. That when you lift your hands and open your mouth and say, Father, he responds to you. You don't have to ask him for no car. You don't have to ask him for no house. All you have to do is worship him for who he is. And everything that you need, he responds. Slip those hands up and open your mouth and worship the Father. That's it. Worship him. Because you love him. hands. I love you forever with all my heart. I love you forever. forever. You help me say that tonight. Your mercy forever, say, your 
Forever you're my king. Forever you're my king. Lift those hands. Oh, you are royalty. So I crown you king of kings. You're mine to see. Hallelujah. Your majesty. One more time, can you stretch your hands? Stretch those hands one more time.
Somebody just give him worship right there. Somebody just give him worship right there. Come on, just open your mouth up and give him worship right there. You patty cake and God, but I don't see nobody's mouth open. I said give him worship. Come on, give him worship. Come on, give him worship. To the secret place. your way down. Put your hands together for the Lord. And while you're clapping your hands, put your hands together for our pastor. For Lady Boy. To Dr. Gail Johnson. For all of the elders. Dr. Morgan. To Prophet Clay Jemison, that has been our minister. Pastor Jesse has been playing for me, and he is just an awesome man of God. I want you to get your Bibles and going to be as expeditious as I possibly can in bringing what I know to be a word from the Lord. Get your Bibles and go with me to the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter and the second verse of the book of Hebrews. Thank you. The book of Hebrews. The 12th chapter and the second verse. For the sake of time, I'm going to try my best to relay what have been downloaded to me that I have been walking in for several months now. And the Lord helping me to understand what he is saying to the body of Christ. The book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter and the second verse, and it reads as follows. Looking away from all that will distract to Jesus. Number one, who is the leader? Number two, and the source of our faith. Number three, giving the first incentive for our belief. Number five, and is also its finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection. He for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God find that scripture to be most interesting 
in an hour like we are living in today. Because when you look at the fact of the scripture, it tells us that Jesus Christ is the source and the initiator of what I believe. In other words, if there were no Christ, I would have no belief system. I would have nothing to believe. In other words, we are to be grateful to the Lord. And I know that it's, it's, it's tent time and, and not treating it like it's a tradition, but we ought to be most grateful to the Lord. Because the only way that we can believe, the only way that we can be saved, is that Jesus has to call us to believe. Which means this. You're not born into the world knowing how to believe God. You have to be brought into the belief of God. And then by the grace of God, I saw one hand go up. Thank you, sister. By the grace of God, by the grace of God, he picks you out of everybody in your family. And he causes you to believe God. I ain't hear nobody talk to me because y'all act like believing is free. Believing is not free. It costs something for somebody to believe God. Somebody said it costs something for somebody to believe God. I said that because, don't over push it. I said that because when we look at the fact that he called me to believe him. The book of John said, and after Jesus had got done performing all of these miracles, after he got finished performing miracles in the face of the people where they're watching blinded eyes come open, they are watching God do supernatural miracles. The Bible said they still could not believe. Don't that sound like us? After everything that God has done for you, we still can't believe God. After everything that he brought you through, you still can't believe God. Oh, I hear God talking tonight. One of the reasons why we find it difficult to believe God, and this is my own assumption here, is because we're not looking away from the distractions that will cause us not to believe God. One of the things that we deal with is the, all of the distractions of the things of this world. Somebody said this world. Somebody said this world. And so then John says, and I come with a question tonight. I come with a question tonight. I come with a question tonight. Not trying to prove that I can preach. I've been preaching since I was 12. I can wake up out of my sleep preaching. So I'm not trying to impress you tonight that I can preach. I'm not trying to... I'm not trying to hype the tent. I just, I just want us to, I just want things to be different. I don't, I don't know about y'all. Maybe, maybe that's me. Maybe that's me. Maybe that's me. But I want to be able to look around at the body of Christ. And I want to see that in all the years that we serve in God, and all the years that we pray, and all the years that we fast, and all the years that we come into church, and all the years that we've been doing this tent, I'm ready to just see something different. Maybe I'm by myself today. Maybe I'm by myself today. Oh, my God, my God. I'm just ready to see God do something different. I'm just ready to see God be God. And I'm wondering, why is it that the Lord can be God in other cultures, but he can't be God with black people? I just want to know that tonight. I'm wondering, why is it that God can do magnificent things with all the people? And then when it comes down to us, it's just praising God. It's just shouting. It's just speaking in tongues. But we don't see the benefits. Somebody say, I'm ready to see the benefits. Somebody say, I'm ready to see the benefits. Touch your neighbor again and say, I'm ready to see the benefits. So then the prophet speaks up. 
And he said, the word of the Lord is fulfilled. In the book of John, the 12th chapter, he said, and to whom has the arm, the power of the Lord been shown, unveiled, and revealed? Good Lord have mercy. Who is it among us has this power? person that's sitting next to you who has this power that the Lord is talking about I've been sitting in this all day long I, I, I got up this morning and just sat down with my Bible and just could not get up for hours and hours and hours and I just kept saying to the Lord to whom have you given this power to Where is it? In other words, my question tonight is, kind of stick it, but did it leave with my daddy? Did it leave with my grandmother? When my father left this earth, did he take this power with him? When Pastor Boyd left the earth, did the power leave and go with Pastor Boyd? But then to whom has God given this power? I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. To whom has God given it to? Because we look around the earth realm and there's a lot of good preaching, but no power. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of demonstration. But let me help us with that word demonstration. Let me help you with the word demonstration. Because there is some, there is, there is a such thing called called the spirits of the wonder kinds. And I got to talk about that for a minute. The spirit of the wonder kinds. The spirit of the wonder kinds. The spirit of the wonder kinds are people that are born naturally with gifts. And there are people that are born naturally with gifts to be able to, to tap the information realm of the spirit. They're able to tap the second level of the spirit so they can find out what your phone number is and what your address is and all of that. And so, you know, the world is just all excited now because we got all of these prophets that's coming up now and they can tell your address, they can tell your phone number, they can tell you where you live, they can tell you how many cousins you got, how many kids you got, what their names are, but they cannot bring us to power. They cannot put us in the face of God. You know when you're dealing with a wonder kind, when there is no invitation to become closer to God. There's only an invitation to be excited about my gift. And so who has this power? Who got this power? Can I just, can I just, can I just hit this? Who got this power? Who got, who, who got, who got the power to confront real demons? I ain't talking about performance demons because there's a difference. You know, God showed me that in prayer about a month ago. He said there's a difference between casting out real devils and devils of performance. Because when you a devil yourself, there are demons that will come into your service. And they will come out at your command because you all are performing something. They're not being delivered. They're just coming out so that it can impress the people so that the people now can think you got power. But I'm talking about when somebody laying in the hospital with cancer and the doctor said they will not get well. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm talking about somebody that's got a brain tumor. And the doctor says, there's nothing else I can do for you. Who am I talking to? I'm, oh, my God. I'm talking about the boy that began to throw himself on the ground because he was possessed with legions. So the disciples had power of familiarity because they were with Jesus. But they couldn't make that devil come out. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They couldn't make that demon come out. And they tried. And they went to Jesus and they said, 
Why couldn't we cast this devil out? Jesus, have mercy. Oh, my God. Why couldn't we cast this spirit out? What was wrong with us that, that we couldn't cast this spirit out? Mm -hmm. What's wrong that I, things for me can't change? What's wrong that, 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 that my struggling, listen to this, that my struggling now seems to be the way, the way of Christianity. So we don't have a lot of victories. We have a victory every now and then. But now our struggling is classified as our salvation. So now you know you save when you just struggle all the time. Now you know you're saved when you're depressed all the time. Now you know, now you know you must love the Lord because, because we call it we call it the devil attacking us, and we call it the enemy having an advantage over us. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere with this. We call it that. We call it that because we don't know nothing else to call it. We call it that to help our sanity. Maybe it's just me. We we we. We congratulate ourselves for going through hard things because we want to feel good about this thing called salvation. We want to feel good about the fact that I love the Lord. But then God showed me something. He said, are you in the kingdom of the church? Are you in the kingdom of God? No, I'm... I'm, I'm I, if, I'm going to say something one more time. I said, he said, are you in the kingdom of the church? Oh, are you in the kingdom of God? I'm, I'm, and I'm, and I'm, somebody bring me, bring me some of these chairs and just, 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 just line these chairs up right here. Are you in the kingdom of God? Oh, are you in the kingdom of the church? Who is this power revealed to? Y'all hearing that? Bring them, bring them down here so the people can see them. Bring them down here so the people can see them. Bring them down here so the people can see them. Just line them up together. Because the kingdom, I'm almost finished. Mark the fourth chapter and the 30th and the 32nd verse says, and he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Who is like the kingdom of God? How do I know that I have escaped the tyrannism of Christianity as it relates to church? And I have made the great escape over into the kingdom of God. How do I know that I'm not stuck in a place where my life is going to be in a cycle that I can never get out of? Good Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. How do I know that I'm in the kingdom of God? When did that happen for me? Hmm. So he says, the kingdom of God is a comparison and it is compared to a grain of a mustard seed which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth you would take the kingdom of God as vast as it is, and you would compare that to a grain, you would take God, the kingdom of God, and compare that to a grain. Okay. Well, then it must be something to it. Because the Bible said it is the least Seed, I know you know about the mustard seed, but just humor me for a minute. It is the least seed among all of the seeds. I'm talking about all of the seeds of the earth realm. There's nothing bigger than that. 
But what are some of the things that we can look at about the mustard seed? How is it that God will compare the mustard seed to the kingdom of God and then say, but when it is sown, it becomes greater than all the rest of the earth. And not just become greater, but it goes in the ground as an herb. But it responds out of the ground like a tree. The mustard seed is not a tree. The mustard seed is an herb. What is it that makes the mustard seed go in the ground like an herb? But then it starts responding like a tree. What is it that makes God talk to us like that? What is it? What is it about this seed that God has compared the kingdom of God to the point that he said Jesus went into the ground as just a mustard seed. But once he was planted, you don't hear me, you don't hear me, you don't hear me, you don't hear me. It's the deception of the devil to make you think that you need a whole lot of something. I just said something right there. I can't, I can't, I can't get what I need, prophets, because, because I don't have enough. Lord Jesus, I don't have enough. I don't have enough faith. How, how, many, how many times you hear people, how many times you hear people say that? Because see, what you don't understand, what you don't understand is that the mustard seed is an herb, but the mustard seed will remain a mustard seed, unless it is planted in prophesied soil. I said prophesied soil. In other words, the mustard seed turns out to be what it is because of where it sat. The mustard seed does not become what it is. Listen to this. The mustard seed does not become what it is by itself. The mustard seed matures uh, when it is sat inside of a soil that had been prophesied to. Uh huh. In other words, in other words, the Bible said to us that that here we go now. He said when the man took the seed and he planted that mustard seed, it said that the mustard seed began to grow like a tree. Now, what is it that caused my mustard seed paint to go in like a tree? What is it that caused it to begin to grow like that? Because the book of Psalms, the first chapter said, and you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. In other words, my, my mustard seed was planted in a tree. That's why it's got to respond to me like a tree. Cannot respond to me like a branch. I, wait, I can't listen to this. I can't plant what God says is mine and come out with nothing. Good Lord, have mercy. I don't think somebody understood that. I said, I can't plant what God said is mine and come out with nothing. When you are of the kingdom of God, your delivery is guaranteed. When you are the, I'm not hearing y'all. When you are of the kingdom of God, it's not so much as all the tongues you speak as it is your ability to plant. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Get an ink pen in your hand right quick. I got to do this. Get an ink pen in your hand. Put a dot on your finger. Draw a dot on your finger. Draw a dot on your finger all over this tent. When you get through drawing that dot, put your hand up. Put your finger up. Put your finger up. Put your finger up. Let me see it. Let me see it. Let me see it. Now turn around and look at that. That is all the faith you need to get everything you got to have. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Y'all ain't saying that. He didn't say have a bucket full. He didn't say have a backyard full. He said if you would just have the faith that size. Wait, 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 Y'all ain't saying that because that size can bring them out of the hospital. That size can dry up AIDS. That size can break the back of the devil. Who am I preaching to right now? Y'all look like y'all don't believe God. I understand. I understand. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. I understand. I understand. 
I understand. Let me see. I got to go backwards with you. Let me, let me, let me, let me help you understand why you can't get this. Let me help you understand why something so simple, simple is so, so difficult. Because, see, we think the power and prince of the air is, uh, the, you know, um, the president and all of what they're doing and all of what they're saying, all of what they decide, wrong. Pastor, this thing got me because I said, what is interfering with our mustard seed transition? Why is it that it's so hard, God, for people to believe that? He said to me, I want you to read something. So I started reading. For the sake of time, I'm going to paraphrase everything I'm saying. I started reading. And he said to me, he said, Juanita, you're talking about spheres. And he said, you're talking about the realm that's around the world that is outside of the dimensions of the world is spheres. He said, the powers that I'm not talking about is not the powers that sit in Washington. I'm talking about the spheres that sit around the earth realm. I said, well, what does that got to do with us if we say? He said, because you've got to understand something. When I created the stars and the moons and all of that, and I put it in the place, man began to study it in such a way. God revealed this to me. He began to study it until men, he really understood the sun, the moon, the stars, to the point that he studied so long until, start walking, Antoinette, until he, he, was, he was able to judge what happens, like, come back, come back a minute, come, come back right quick. Because when she's, when she's standing right here, the light is in her face. But he began to study so long that when man walk the earth realm, he began to study where the sun hits the body at a certain time of the day. And then he kept on studying, come on, walk back, until he was able to determine how, how the sun and how the elements affect the person after several months, and then he began to study so long, keep on studying, until he realized that everybody that was born in January, they act a certain way around about January. And then everybody that's born in February, they act a certain way around about February. And certain things happen to them. And then come March, people that's born in March, they start acting a different way. And so then he began to say that what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit man under signs. I'm going to sit man under Aquarius and Sagittarius and Pisces and all of that. And God said, but the trick about that is, the trick about that, Pastor, is this. Everybody that sits under a sign, you can't get no more than what your sign say you can have. In other words, your life is in rotation. And that's the reason why you can't get what God has for you. Because you're in the rotation that's under the sun, under the moon, under the stars. But how does that affect me? How does that affect my faith? How does that stop me? It stops me because it said that a perverse generation seeks a sign. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. What am I saying? I'm saying if you don't operate in the spirit of God, you are backing yourself up and sitting yourself under a sign. And because you are under a sign, what is the nature of a sign? You cannot put a sign up without dimensions and measurements. If we was going to advertise this tent, I, I'm just saying, I don't care how bad you want the people to know. When you go to a billboard and they say, you want to advertise a tent and you say yes, they're going to say your dimensions is a 24 by 69. I don't care if you make your printer go make you a 55 by 95. They're not going to let you put that up. Y'all ain't hearing me. They're not going to let you put that up because they gave you your dimensions. And what we don't realize is that when we tell God, Lord, if you're going to do it, then show me a sign. What we say to God is now what I'm getting from you is now dimensional. Now it can be measured. Now it can be cut off. So I walk under the spirit. Watch this. 
So I am worshiping one God while serving another. Wait a minute, I'm saying it again. I am worshiping one God while serving another. I'm going to say that one more time. I'm worshiping one God by serving another to this capacity. That when God says do something, we need a sign. No, I'm going to teach this tonight. I don't care if you don't shout. I'm not, I'm, I didn't come to make you shout. I didn't come to make you shout. I came to get you from under. Watch this. I came to get you from under another religion called Mesopotamian. That's who we are now. We are Christians, but we are Mesopotamians. That's who we are. That's who we are. Because when we don't believe God, we believe another sign. See, that's my sign right there. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I told you the devil don't want the saints free. You don't hear what I'm saying. He wants us to keep shouting without realizing what is going on in our life. God already let me know you was going to have a manifestation of demonic warfare because people need to understand that the devil wants to keep you trapped. Why? Because without faith, it is impossible to please God just because you're shouting doesn't mean you have faith I'm not here nobody talk to me I said because you speaking in tongues don't mean you got faith who am I talking to you don't have faith until you standing up against the impossible and you refuse to move who am I talking to you ain't got faith until you're standing where God told you to stand I'm not getting nobody to praise God right there. I'm not getting nobody to praise God right there because you done got your faith all locked up in your emotions. And whether I feel like it or not, it has nothing to do with what you feel. It has everything to do with what God said. And if you take him as his word. When I got the phone call. God, I feel something breaking in this building. I feel something breaking. You going out of this tent and you going to be walking and healing when you leave out of here. You going out of this tent and you going to tell the devil I changed my mind. I want everything that God says is mine. And I ain't got to muscle up a whole lot of fake faith. All I need is a faith. The size. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, let me tell you why. 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 I learned something about this mustard seed. I learned, Dr. Johnson, that that little dot on your finger is three millimeters in diameter. And I brought some mustard seeds so everybody can get one because we done forgot to swallow. You go. You're going to put it in your mouth tonight and you're going to swallow this. I ain't, I ain't hear nobody talk to me. I ain't hear nobody talk to me. I ain't hear nobody talk to me. Because see, you try, listen, listen. You see all them chairs down there? You see all them chairs down there? Yeah. Antoinette, bring me the mustard seeds. Bring, bring me one. Bring me one. Just bring me one. You see all them chairs? See all these chairs that's all over this tent? Uh -huh. You see all these you see all these chairs right here? You see all this right here? This is the stuff that we line up trying to convince ourselves that we believe God. Um, but you don't need that. Uh, you don't need that. Yeah, yeah, I'm not hearing y'all. You don't need that right there. You don't need that right there. You don't need that. Right all you need is this little thing that I'm going to drop that you don't even notice and hit the ground. No, you don't hear what I'm saying because that's the faith that you can rely on. That's the faith that you can count on because that's the one that God told you to have. I'm not hearing nobody tell me. He didn't say have a bucket full. He didn't say have it 10 miles. He said if you just had a grain. Wait, 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 wait. I learned something about this seed that blew my mind. I learned that the seed, Pastor, if you lined up seven miles 
of a cube of mustard seed. And you chose one mustard seed every 100 years. That would be 956 trillion times the age of the earth, which means the earth can become the earth 68 billion times, which means the seed that he told us to believe in has the power to outlive this world and start another world. No, you didn't hear what I said right there. Now I know why the Bible said that we want the faith that was once delivered unto the saints because that faith don't die with them. In other words, some of the stuff that's happening for us right now is because of the faith of your grandmother. It's because of the faith of your daddy. It's because of the faith of your mother. Who am I talking to? As a matter of fact, a lot of your faith ain't even started working yet. You better give God a praise right there. I'm not hearing nobody give God a praise. I said, I said what God called you to believe in. What he demanded that you trust can create another world. It's so powerful that it can put another world into action. It's so powerful that no matter what happens, now this is the part I love right here. This is the part I love. If all he required me to have, now I know why he said to the disciples, because of the littleness of your faith. I said, God, what? He said, the littleness of your faith. What does that mean? The littleness of my faith and of their faith meant this. I only told you to have three millimeters. And you got less than three millimeters. As to the reason why you couldn't get this done. Now I know why without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because he only required that you have three millimeters. Oh, I, I can't get nobody to say nothing. I can't, I can't get nobody to say Because see, y'all want to stay in the waiting line. Well, you go ahead and stay in the waiting line. Because some of us getting ready to get it right now. I, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me because ever since I swallowed the mustard seed a couple of weeks ago I've been seeing some stuff come to pass because God will use a foolish thing to confound the wise Because once I had that association to the fact that there is something powerful growing on the inside of me I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me Once I realized that there was a faith that is growing on the inside of me that I didn't have Are you hearing me? And I got it from my mustard seed I got it because I chose to believe God. One scripture in Psalm says, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Watch this. And you shall bring forth fruit in your seed. Your leaves shall not wither. And whatsoever you do shall prosper. Until it got to Jeremiah. When it got to Jeremiah, it said, and you shall be like a tree planted, and your roots shall spread out. Which means, Pastor, I'll take it my own self. In the next six months, I'm liable to come up anywhere. Because the Bible said, now tonight for those that believe it, your roots is going underground. You're not going to even come up where you were planted. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. There's going to be some other stuff that's going to sprout out for your life. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. They're going to look for you over here and you're going to be somewhere else. Who am I preaching to? Somebody better give God a shout. I said you better give him a shout. They're going to look for you in the basement and you're going to be on the mountaintop. They're going to look for you in the valley And you are going to be on the top of the hill Who am I talking to? They're going to look for you in poverty And they're going to find you operating In the spirit of wealth Who am I talking to? Somebody give God a shout in here Y'all patty cake and God Y'all patty cake and God Y'all patty cake and God you praise God right there but all I want somebody to do in here is touch your neighbor and say give me some room I feel something sprouting up out of my spirit somebody give him a shout right now somebody give him a shout come on give him a shout 
come on, give God a praise. See, some of y'all looking at this man. Can't get nobody to talk to me right now. Some of y'all looking at this man. But the reason why that man walked out of his seat. Thank you, Jesus. The reason why this man. I'm not talking about the other man. The reason why this man just walked out of his seat. Because the Bible said that while Paul was preaching, there was a man that had never walked before. But the Bible said that when he conceived faith, Paul shouted at him. I'm not here nobody talk to me. You stand in there tonight. And it's the last night of the tent. But I hear the Lord saying, you got to open up your mouth. You got to give God a shout. Because the Bible said that Paul shouted. And when he shouted, the man leaped up and started walking. Anybody in this place that's ready to walk, you better shout. Somebody shout. Help you with something. Let me help you with that story. The Bible said that he had never walked before, but Paul shouted at him when he saw his faith. And the Bible said that when Paul shouted, the man got up, but Paul didn't tell him to walk. Paul said, get up on your feet and stand up. But what was in the man was the power to walk. What was in the man was his desire to walk. And in this building, the kind of faith that I'm talking about, God will give you exceedingly and abundantly and above all you can ask or think. Somebody, all you got to do is shout. I said shout I said shout I said shout I said shout Why you got me shouting? Because he birthing something. Why you got me shouting? Because he breaking something. Why do you have me shouting? Because he burning up my tree of faith. Somebody shout. said why is it important to shout out here today because God showed me something he talked about I was in my house hold up and I ordered a, an alarm system and it was an expensive alarm system but I had a feature on it that I didn't know that I had good God have mercy I was in my kitchen and I dropped a pot and when I dropped the pot, the alarm went off. And I started running. It was about 3 o'clock in the morning. I thought somebody was trying to break in. I started running to see was a door ajar. And then the phone rang. And it was the security people. And they said, ma'am, are you all right? I said, yes, I am. They said, do you know what happened? I said, no, ma'am. She said, we got an alarm. It sounded like shattered glass. It sounded like somebody was trying to break in. And God gave me a revelation. He said, when somebody is trying to break in and steal your faith, you got to open up your mouth. You got to sound an alarm. Who am I talking to? You can't wait on your neighbor. You got to shout because the devil is trying to steal your joy. The devil is trying to steal your favor. Somebody better shout. This is the part I like. This is the part I like. I start studying that thing. I start studying frequencies. 
And I found out that there was a sound that can break glass if the frequency is high enough. But then the children of Israel showed us that there was a frequency that can break brick if it's high enough. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I ain't hear nobody say nothing. Somebody said, I'm ready for my blessing. But in order for the message to get to heaven, you got to sound a frequency that's loud enough to break the barrier of sound. Because the devil don't want you heard. That's why you better open up your mouth. You better give God a shout. Because the devil don't want you heard. Somebody give God a shout. Somebody shout. Somebody shout. Wait a minute. I'm closing with this. I'm closing with this. I got another thing on my house. They said this is extra. So I'm not talking to y'all that just feel like rearing back and just saying, uh, I'm talking to somebody that wants something extra. He said, listen, if you buy this pad, put this pad on the side of your house. When your alarm go off, a blue light will shine for two miles in all different directions. So when the police is coming, he ain't got to figure out which house it is because it's the house with the blue light underneath this tent. You better give him a praise because you're trying to tell God it's over here. I'm the one that's been praying. I'm the one that's been fasting. Somebody give God a shout. Right there, hold it. What y'all doing right now? What y'all doing right now? What y'all doing right now? Cause see, I'm good. I'm good. Cause I don't have to kill myself under this tent. I'm good. I'm good. Cause what they doing right there? That's a church religious. I don't want to mess my hair up and I don't feel like running and I'm tired, praise. And, and, and since y'all going to give him that, then I'm good. We might as well go on so I can just get the offering so we can go home. Because I don't play with it no more. Because what I done seen God do, just because somebody shout. I done told somebody to shout in the hospital after the doctor said their daughter was going to die and there was no hope. And I said, I don't care who y'all wake up. I said, shout. Because one of the things that shouting does, it causes the enemy to start running because he know he been caught. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Yeah. I said, one of the things that it does, uh, shouting uh, causes the enemy to run. Uh, shouting uh, causes the enemy to run. Uh, Somebody that I praise him, praise him like you believe God, praise him like you trust God, praise him. You better praise him because your redeemer lives, your redeemer lives, your redeemer lives. Somebody praise him because the cattle on a thousand hills is gone. Somebody praise him. Hold on. Touch your neighbor. Touch your neighbor. Touch your neighbor. Said neighbor. Said neighbor. Excuse me for a minute, but I gotta give him a different kind of praise. I got to give him a different kind of praise. Because tell him I think I feel some branches coming up. I think I feel some branches shooting up. But the Bible said that it'll shoot up. That means unexpectedly. God can really give you a blessing that you did not expect. Somebody better praise it. Because I will trust in the Lord with all of my heart and 
lean not to my own understanding, but in all my ways I'll acknowledge him and he shall direct my path. He shall supply all of my needs. He shall heal my body. Somebody shall. frequency out in this park y'all praising him and they getting ready for the jerk fresh and we getting ready to look like jerks I'm not here nobody talk to me but we better make a sound underneath this tent right now everybody shout You gotta let the world know. You gotta let the devil know. Call him on fire. Call him on fire. He comes on fire. That Jesus is the world. My son, shout. If you be ashamed of me, if you be ashamed of me, then I will be ashamed of you. Somebody give God a shout. Hold on. Hold on, because I'm looking at y'all. Hold on. I see some people. That girl right there with the navy blue dress on. You right there, uh-huh. You need to just break out of there and start running. That girl behind you with that black t-shirt on. You need to break out. The girl behind her, you need to break out. Cause this is a breakout place. This is a revolving of my faith place. This is me swallowing the mustard seed faith. I'm not here nobody talk to me. Some of y'all need to break out. You need to break out of your picture. I'm talking about a praise. I'm talking about a praise. I'm looking at seven more of y'all. I'm looking at seven more of y'all. You better forget about you in the tent and start running. You better forget about where you are. Because you ain't got but one moment. You ain't got but a second. Wait. There was a frequency. There was a frequency. Let me help you with this right quick. There was a button for people that operate in radio. There was a button. And the button is, when you're on the radio, now that everything is digital, listen to this. There's a tower that's going up out of this tent. And so when you're on the radio and you interview with somebody and they say something stupid, there's a delay button where you got 20 seconds to hit that button. And it takes out of the atmosphere what the person just said and it kills the frequency. There's another frequency that goes out so high that it annihilates what they just said and it erases it so that the world can hear it. And the Holy Ghost said that some of y'all done spoke some crazy stuff. Some of y'all done acted like God couldn't do it. Some of y'all done sat down and said, I feel like giving up. And he said, you got 20 seconds to give God a praise and snatch that thing back. Because I'm gonna tell you, by this time tomorrow, you gonna see the hand of God coming in your direction. I said, praise him. You got 20 seconds to take it back out of the atmosphere. Somebody give God a praise. Cancel it. Cancel it. Your words are powerful. Cancel it. Cancel every negative thing that you have ever spoken over your life. Cancel it. Stop the creation of it. Stop the evolving of it. Shut it down. Divine reversal. Divine 
divine reversal. It's going into divine reversal. Divine reversal. Divine reversal. Divine reversal. Divine reversal. Divine reversal. Come on, Bethel! Come on, Bethel! 
him. Blast him over here. Blast him over here. Stop panicking God. Praise him for real. Praise him for the sweat of your brow. Praise him till your belly come open. Praise him, Bethel. Bye. 
Everybody start shouting! The Holy Ghost just showed me something. Everybody on this altar, start running through this tent. Start running through this tent right now. And every time you touch somebody, just start shouting out. Run through this tent. Hurry up, Pepper. Hurry up. I, I said run. I don't think you heard me say walk. God said run. And start going through the benches and touching people. Come on here. Go to the benches! Go to the benches! Come go to the benches! He didn't say run around the tent, he said run through the benches. Run to where the people are. Run in between the seats. Run everybody! 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 Let us leave this ground with everybody. Let us leave this ground with everybody. Oh, Jesus. Let us leave this ground, God. Hey! Somebody bless him. Oh, God, increase it. Increase it. Increase it. Increase it. Now somebody begin to praise it. Praise it for restoration. Praise Him for restoration. Praise Him for the restoration of your faith. Praise Him now. Praise Him now. Because you can move mountains up. Praise Him now. I know what I see in here. 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 Somebody praise him one more time, baby, right there. That, oh God, that little boy with that striped shirt on. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him, that boy right there. That baby right there in that striped shirt. Come on through, baby, come on through, come on through, come on through. Hey, somebody give God a shout. Somebody give God a shout. Hey, he getting a breakthrough, but so is your children. He getting a breakthrough, but so is your nephew. So is your niece. You better shout. Somebody shout. You can move mountains. You can calm the rain. 
raging sea. You can calm the raging sea. You can go through you the valley. Go through the valley. Stand against the thing that stands against me. Stand against it. Everything that stands against me. You can do anything. Somebody praise him right there when he said you can do anything. You can do anything. Cause you got the faith. Praise him like you got. got the, faith. the size of a mustard seed. You have the faith. The size of the mustard seed. Come on, you can move mountains. You can move mountains. Calm the rage and see. You can calm. Texas. When I got through 
preaching. The Lord gave me that song. He downloaded that song. And that's why I know what he's done under this tent. And this time when we sing it, I want you to prophesy that to your neighbor. I want you to tell your neighbor you can move mountains. You can calm the raging sea. You can go through the valley. You can stand against the things that stand against me. Because you can do anything. I said you can do anything. Because you got the faith. The size of a mustard seed. That's all you need. Are y'all ready? Come on. trick of the devil becomes this and it is to have you working up something that you don't even need have you trying to apply a whole lot of something when all you need is a little bit of something are y'all hearing this are you hearing this the trick of the enemy is to constantly tell you that you ain't got enough. That, watch this. We are the tree of righteousness. We're not going to grow up to be a tree. When we are born again, we are a tree. So my faith is not going to grow up to be faith. My faith is faith. I don't think y'all get that. My, my faith is faith. My mustard seed. Whatever it is I'm believing God, the minute I, I look at my finger and say, God, I at least believe it this much. I can speak your mouth. I can cause it to go 
yonder. Let's look this in the I want you to look at your finger again. I'm serious. If you got that much, you don't need a when I went to the hospital, and God sent me to the hospital to pray. Michelle Des Ross's daughter. And the doctor said she was gonna die. On my way out the door, I knew I was going to the hospital. Because the doctor said we're gonna put her in a coma so she can go easy. Paralyzed from my neck down. I knew I was going to a mess. But on my way out the door, this is how I got this word. Somebody gave me as a gift a little box with a glass top on it and a mirror on the bottom. And they put a mustard seed on there and glued it to the mirror and put a glass top on it. And they gave it to me as a gift. And God told me to grab that. And when I got to the hospital and I stood over her bed, the most she could do is wall her eyes. I said, if you and me both got this much, you will walk out of this hospital. Well, she was at church Tuesday night. No, you didn't hear me. After being paralyzed where her hands is deformed, after the machines would stand her up, after she could not talk, after the doctor said if she lived, she's going to be a vegetable, and she would never walk again. She walking by herself. She back to Texas and the activities of her limbs. And I didn't go to the hospital talking about God. I'm going as prophet as Bynum. I said, Lord, what do you say? He said, if you just got this much, she'll come out of this hospital. I'm not kidding y'all. You don't hear me. When I prayed for her, I didn't use my this much faith. I used my this much faith. Cut, cut. Wait, 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 wait. Because Sister Michelle, I was smart enough, Pastor, to use a faith that I was confident in than to try to fly with one that I wasn't. Now that right there is a preaching. How many people is flying out there believing God on a whole lot of something? that they can't hardly believe. When that much brings another sense of confidence because you're able to say to yourself, I got that much. I, wait, I got. So now the doctor's saying, let me tell you how faith is. When I prayed for her, before I got to the hospital, and God was talking to me. I went up in the Holy Ghost, Pastor, and God said to me, Sister Michelle, call the Holy Ghost Pastor, and God said to me, call the hospital and tell them the spirit of death is walking. I said, tell them the spirit of death is walking. I said, I don't care what you do. Grab a hold to it and believe God. They moved her out of that room that night. And one week to the hour, the lady that was moved in that room died. That came for somebody, but he couldn't take her because of my mustard seed. You got, see, y'all ain't praising God, but you got people underneath this tent that you gonna go back to the doctor. You gonna go back to the doctor, and he gonna say it's in reverse. He gon' say it's in remission. I'm not here about to talk to me. God said I'm listening. I hear it in my spirit. I hear it in my spirit. Cancer is drying up in somebody on this tent. I hear it in my spirit. I said it's drying up. Hold up, I'll go shake that in my heart. He can't let it all about Christ. I'll shake that in my heart. All over this tent, everybody 
is going to come down here and get one. Ever since I swallowed mine, when I need God to do stuff, I just, Pastor, I just hit myself in my belly. Lady Boyd and I said, go to work. Go to work because you're down in there. You're down in there. Go to work. I'm getting ready to go in this place and I need you to go to work. Now, who am I talking to? Because you're getting ready to live your life different. Because I hear the Holy Ghost saying, the people that told you no, go back again. It's time to go to work. Tell your mustard seed, it's time to go to work. Somebody better give God a break. Y'all don't believe it, but I'm telling you supernatural jobs. I'm talking about supernatural doors. You don't have to believe me today, but I know this much. I got the faith. your children I'm telling you when you leave this tent and you swallow yours you better go to the store and get you some and just throw one in the bottom of your son's shoe y'all ain't saying that I, no, this, I'm telling you I'm seeing this thing work I know it's crazy I know it sounds crazy but I'm going to tell you something. It ain't no different than a prayer cloth. When God said doing it, he gets on it, he's on it. And I'm here to tell you there's something about this mustard seed thing that when you start operating in it, I promise you, you coming back to church with testimonies like you would not believe. Because God said, you've been trying to muscle up something. You got a whole lot of false faith. And all I told you to have is a mustard seed. All over this tent. I'm getting ready to give these seeds out. When I tell you, Pastor, you won't let me come down out of this. My faith have gone to another place to the point that the Bible said that you shall be like a tree and you shall not fear during the year of drought and you will not be filled with anxiety. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You getting ready to swallow a seed that's going to remove anxiety. Get nobody to talk to me. I just wish I had somebody say something. I said, you get me to you get me to smell a seed that's gonna remove anxiety, that's gonna remove worry. They're gonna say, What you doing, mama? You're gonna say, I'm on my mustard seed faith. Leave me alone. I'm not kidding about oh, come on. Every single day you're gonna walk around and put a dot on your finger. And I'm here to tell you, it's got to come from somewhere. I don't know where God gonna bring it from, but it's gonna come from somewhere. I've been walking right here and God hasn't let me move from this place and because I know what God is doing in my life I, I told pastor I said I don't even have to preach the tent this year and he was like no you got to at least do one night because when you stand in a world seat you don't have to fight for one. You don't have to fight for one. And I said to the Lord, only if you want me to, God, and only if Pastor wants me to. But I wasn't itching for no time. But God brought me out here. 
And I told the Lord, share with Pastor, I said, lately the enemy has been attacking my body, and I know because I've been, I've been on this right here. But now I see him. So everything he's been trying in the last 24 hours, I said, and that ain't going to work either. And that ain't going to work either. And that ain't going to work either. I don't even have to get up out of the bed and start and say, the Lord rebuke and I bind you. I said, must deceive faith. I, 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 mm -mm. Because the works of the enemy, Dr. Morgan, when I realize the power of this mustard seed thing, he don't even get a whole hand from me. You get a finger. Not you. Not now. Not this. Not ever. Not ever. And I promise y'all, I'm seeing stuff unlock. Things that have been locked, I'm seeing it unlocked because I know for a fact that I have found a secret. That if you have the faith, the size of a grain, your job, watch this, your job is to keep your soil prophesied to. Turn around and tell somebody, I got a prophecy in my soul. You got the prophecy. Tonight, you just going to swallow. Because when the seed lands in the soil, symbolically, the tree going to sprout up. I'm telling y'all, I've seen instant miracles. He had me walking in this thing. And he said, everywhere you go, last two weeks, he operated in it when I went to the hospital. But I didn't know that God was giving me to preach it. I just knew that he, what he told me to do and it worked. And that's when he began to show me. He said, no, you got to reveal this to the people of God. Because they're trying to muscle up something they don't need. I said, this size. This size can restart the world. I gave them something to believe in that has the power every 100 years to last 956 trillion years and to recreate the earth 65 billion times. I know, I just saw somebody go, my God, yes. That's what you got. That's what you got. That's what's inside of you that the devil don't want you to know that secret. All over this building. I've been moving in this for the last two weeks. And God said, don't move from this. Because I know what I'm doing. 33 people under this tent. Give me some envelopes. Glory to God. I went to golf to preach at golf. And I preached for three days. I ministered hard for three days. In that convocation, I need more envelopes. And when I got through preaching this word about this mustard seed, God said to me, you getting ready to move into some things. And I said, yes, Lord. When I got done preaching for three days, and they walked up to me, and they gave me my honorarium, I got back to the hotel room. And the Holy Ghost said, give it back. Because I'm getting ready to take you to another level. I called the finance director and I said, I just tore up my check. He said, what? I said, I just tore up my check. He said, are you sure? Because we weren't talking about no pennies. I said, I'm positive. I said, God, getting ready to take me to another mustard seed level. And I don't want to miss my ride. You know, it's like getting ready to go to church and your ride said they're going to be there at 7 o'clock. 
and your sister called you and she run her mouth on the phone and you said, I got to go. Because if I don't, I'm going to miss my ride. I told the Lord, I don't want to miss my ride. And so God, I released it. And I did. He said, when you get out on those tent grounds tonight, there's 33 people on this tent ground. Tell them I said, don't miss their ride. When I tell you there is a shift going on with this mustard seed thing, I cannot begin to tell you the testimonies. Because it works. There's 33 people underneath this tent that God told me tonight that you got to move in faith. And I'm not talking about a whole lot. Because the key about mustard seed faith is that it is activated through obedience. Instantly activated. Instantly activated. Instantly activated. There's 33 people under this tent that God is calling to give the 133 seed. I don't know why. But he told me everywhere I go to stay right here. He said, because this is what I'm going to use to show them that I can take a little and I can do something supernatural. And what he has given me is this. Do not stand on the floor and beg. Do not take a long time because it's a quickness that's in this operation. He said, the people that I'm talking to already know who they are. So come now. Come now. What's $133? Nothing. Thank you, Jesus. I promise you, I'm not going nowhere. I belong to Bethel. You're going to see me again. And you're going to be able to say to me, Prophet Bonham, guess what happened to me? I'm telling you. Something is happening with this mustard seed thing. Something is taking place with this mustard seed thing. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. Not a joke. Not a joke. Not a joke. Something is happening. I know that it is. I know that it is. I know that it is. I know what I'm talking about. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the presence of the Lord. I feel the presence of the Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. I got to obey him. Hold on. I got to obey him. Hold on. I just heard the Lord speak something to me. And I'm just too, way too grown in the Holy Ghost to doubt him. And I'm so far gone beyond the emotions of any of it till I take him at his naked word. And whatever he speaks, I say it because I know what he's doing. There's seven people under this tent that God is calling you. Your seed is $1,033. I didn't even, I didn't even think in that direction. While I was standing there, God said, there's seven people under this tent that I'm getting ready to do something supernatural in their businesses. And he said, they know who they are because they have it and I'm talking to them. He said, it's a mustard seed movement. 
He said, like the woman that reached out and touched the hem of his garment, the Amplified Bible said, and Jesus said to her, because you took a risk of faith, your risk of faith have made you whole. I don't beg. I speak what he said. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. God said you're under this tent. And you need to walk out of your seat and come and get this envelope because the Lord said he gave me to do something in your business. He gave me to do something in your business. All seven of you all are underneath this tent. He getting ready to do something in your business. It's going to break. You better come and get this envelope off of this altar because that's what he's saying. $1,033 is nothing in comparison to what God's going to do for you. He just told me to speak it. Five more of you all struggling. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody said they never did that before, but in order to get something you ain't never had, you got to do something you ain't never done. Don't struggle when God is talking. You can get money back. You can't get a moment back in God when he's speaking. That's something supernatural. As a matter of fact, it was when you walked up on me when God spoke it. When she walked up on me, that's when the Lord hit me. There's 33 people in this building that's supposed to give God $33. Come and get this envelope right quick. Move quickly. Supposed to give God $33. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. He said there's 33 people in this building that's supposed to give $33. I didn't say it. He said it. The other four of you all need to obey God. God wasn't saying it when nobody moved. Not saying if everybody else and he's missing you. He's talking to you. You put everything else on your credit card. Don't struggle with a seat. God can give you back $1,033. But you can't get a moment back in the spirit when God says do something. Don't never argue with God about money. How do you know it's God? Because the enemy will be telling you every reason why you shouldn't. That's when you know it's God. You ain't getting an argument in your spirit about it. Is that of the law? How do I know I'm getting ready to give in faith? Because the enemy will tell me every reason why I shouldn't. Somebody in this building, give God praise. I feel it. Hallelujah. Jesus, you can do anything. Thank you, Jesus. Every person in this building that will give God a sacrificial seed, and what I mean by sacrificial seed, it's profit is my last six dollars, it's my last seven dollars. It's my last three dollars. But today I'm operating on mustard seed faith. Come now and get this envelope out of my hand all over this tent. Come now. I'm going to give him 20. I'm going to give him 10. Before you take this envelope, it's got to be mustard seed faith. In other words, 
What I'm getting ready to give, I can't afford to give it, but I can't afford not to. more of you all are struggling with God don't do it he called the corporate number four people have obeyed him the seven is a corporate number he called the corporate number obey him everything else on your credit card you might as well do this too it's a privilege and an honor oh somebody worship him people in this tent need to obey God I know what I'm talking about you still sitting there arguing with God but I know what I'm talking about the Lord would never speak that through me if you weren't in this tent five of you have obeyed God don't wrestle with God I know this is the Lord thank you Jesus Come now, come now. All 33 people, come now. You took an envelope to give 133. Come now, quickly. 